In the previous video, we looked at the basics of time integration. In this video, we will look at some of the most important and most relevant factors that have to be considered when dealing with time integration schemes. Let us recap. Here is the basic idea of the forward Euler scheme. However, as I had mentioned in the previous video, when we split time into discrete pieces, we are introducing errors. In reality, time is not discrete. Moreover, the error has to be somehow be related to the time step, that is, the size of the time discretization. As the time step size goes to zero, the errors due to discretization should also approach zero. But we are limited by computing resources. So for practical reasons, the time step size is always a finite number. Here is the forward Euler approximation of the velocity at a certain time n. Let us compare this approximation with a mathematically true solution at time step n. We can use the Taylor series to expand the displacement around the time n to obtain an abstract mathematical representation of the true solution. If we use the forward Taylor expansion, we obtain the following expression. You all know this expression from school. We can rewrite this expression in terms of the velocity. Now things become interesting. The first term on the right hand side is the same as the forward Euler approximation. Thus, comparing both these equations, we find that the forward Euler does not replicate the term shown in red. The three dots refer to all higher order terms. In simple terms, the error, that is, the difference between the Euler approximation and the true Taylor expansion at time tn is proportional to the time step size, delta t. Thus, if we reduce the time step size by half, we should expect the error to reduce by half. Let me repeat. If we reduce the time step size by half, we will reduce the error by half. If we double the time step size, we will double the error. Keep this fact in mind. This graph shows us how the time step size affects the changes to the error using a concrete example of a spring mass damper system. The plot is a log log plot. The slope of the straight line is related to the power of the time step. The Euler method is extremely inefficient. On the other hand, the RK4 method is simply superior with fourth order convergence. Now you know why it is called RK4. If we reduce the time step size by half using the RK4 method, we should expect the error to reduce by at least 16 times, that is, delta t by 2 to the power 4 is equal to error divided by 16. The local truncation error that we related in the previous slide to this time step size is the error that is introduced within one time step. A typical transient simulation consists of thousands or millions of time steps. This is bad news. Well, it is self-evident that these errors will accumulate. There will be a cascade of error accumulation that will result in overflow or underflow of numerical computations. That is, the solution will blow up and the simulation will crash. To avoid this situation, we need analysis. We need to analyze the time integration method in more detail. Whenever we are using a methodology in a professional setting, we should know its limits. This is what differentiates you as a master student in computational engineering from someone else who only knows how to use a commercial software such as ANSYS or Abacus. Stability analysis is a fancy word for applying the method to a prototype problem 
and investigating how the method behaves under extreme conditions. Let us consider a one degree of freedom system for the stability analysis. You can also use a pendulum. This second order equation is also the equation for the mass spring damper. In case of structural simulations, M, D and K are just matrices. Please note, I have used C for damping in the previous video. Here, I have switched to D. It does not matter what you call it. It can be C or D. You can also use your own symbol. As long as you know what the term is and it is defined, it is fine. Now let us rewrite this expression in terms of two first order differential equations. On the right, I have written this in matrix notation. As you can see, the future state of the system can be obtained from the current state multiplied with a matrix containing the physical properties of the system and the time step size. In the literature, this is called the amplification matrix. I don't particularly like this word as it is slightly misleading, but for consistency, let us call this the amplification matrix. Now imagine that at time n, we have a superior solution u and b with less error. This will give us hopefully a better update u n plus 1 b. Now we can take the difference of these expressions to give us the propagation of error across one time step. If this red equation was a scalar equation, then we all can agree that if a is smaller than 1, then the error decreases. No matter how big the error at time tn is. However, if a is larger than 1, the error is magnified. In order to apply this methodology for matrices, we need to just compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A. And if the largest absolute eigenvalue is smaller than 1, then we are safe. Otherwise, the errors will propagate in an uncontrolled manner. Thus, the amplification matrix determines the stability of the method. The maximum absolute eigenvalue of a matrix is called the spectral radius. Thus, for stability, the spectral radius must be less than or equal to 1. Here is the amplification matrix for the backward Euler method. As this is an implicit scheme, we need to take care of the inverse on the left to the right hand side. Here is the compact formulation. Similarly, we can also compute the amplification matrix for the RK4 method. However, doing this by hand is very tedious. If you want to compute this, use a computer algebra system like Maple or Mathematica. Now that we have the amplification matrices, we can compute the spectral radius to see if the method is stable and also analyze the conditions under which the method loses stability. Here is shown on the right hand side the spectral radius as a function of the time step size. On the x axis we have the time step size and on the y axis we have the spectral radius for the three methods. The forward Euler method shown in blue, the RK4 method shown in red, and the backward Euler method shown in brown. Here on the right hand side is shown the displacement as a function of time. Shown also are the four methods, the analytical solution in black, the forward Euler in blue, the RK4 method in red, and the backward Euler method in brown. The time step size here is 0 0.1. Here is the same plot for the case when the time step size is 0 0.9. In 
the next video we will look at a second order solver that is the central difference scheme